Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. I'm Zach. Cruz. Jake. And we're fucking Pocket Watch Podcast. Yes, yes sir. Laugh at us or learn with us. We're here to grow. And That's growing, we're fucking doing, man. Welcome to Pocket Watch Podcast. It's your boy. What up, what up? Welcome to another week of Pocket Watch Podcast. Make sure you like, follow, share, subscribe. Yeah. Unless you're fucking one. One Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> Only one Kenobi. Man, it's been a fucking week, guys. Thank you for tuning in with us. I am it's been a week for cruise, man. It's been a real week for me. Um I think it's been a real week for life, bro. I just feel like life's been life in. I just feel like 2024 has came out with a bang. Yeah. Like motherfuckers got angst this year, bro. Like, <laughs> like relax. It's, bro, 20, it's, 2024 is coming out heavy, bro. Isn't it funny? Like how it's like, it's the same, like December 31st and January 1st. It's, it's tomorrow. It's the same day. There's no difference from today and tomorrow, but like mentally it's like different. Mm-hmm. Different things I feel that way about weather too Whenever it gets cold outside Like my mind does Kind of shift a little bit Yeah And then whenever it's hot outside My mind shifts a different way Like I do kind of Compartmentalize things But Man bro You know what's funny About com- compartmentalizing Fun fact You know why they say Like hallucinogens And like uh, Like DMT And things like that Like Rewire your brain Yeah You know why that is mm. They say that Like Um our brain naturally organizes things. Yeah. Like, that's how we survive. Like, that's how we proceed. That's how we get through life, right? Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's a good thing for the most part. Like, oh, like, like if you're walking down the street, you don't realize how much you don't really notice. Mm-hmm. Because you're not, fo- like, you're, you're, like, you're, you're. Focus on walking. Yeah, you're compartmentalizing all your surroundings into this is what I have to go through just to get to this destination. But you're thinking about this and you're moving this here. Whatever this is my job and this is where this should be This is my hobby and this is you know Whatever a good example of that would be like Whenever you see like the videos and like they show you like a Video of a car driving and it's like What color was the motorcycle that drove by you and you're Like motorcycle what motorcycle no clue. Yeah. So what they say is DMT Undoes The organization it like unlocks it It unlocks the organization that your mind Kind of compartmentalizes and stuff And that's why they say like people that do TM- DMT and stuff become tree lovers Because you like you you see this being you start to see it as like a being and you're not like really like organizing it into mm-hmm. like that's just a fucking tree and i'm like moving on to this next thing or whatever fun mm. fact it's kind of interesting that's interesting yeah i didn't know i try, actually love try dmt guys <laughs> have you tried dmt no i mean i think i think it'd be a good experience <laughs> some ayahuasca or something like that ayahuasca i've heard some crazy shit i don't i i know for me i i'm not gonna i can never do uh hallucinogenics just because bro I got I'm a hypochondriac bro If I do a hallucinogenic And my heart beats weird One way That's it bro You feel like you're gonna die Bro that's it I'm, I'm like nightmare 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 but some <laughs> I'm going places, down a bad though, road I know that Some places Which I, I'm with you I'm with you I'm, <laughs> I am Like I feel you on that I'm the same way I just talk mad shit Like I'm gonna try it But I'm the same way But some places It's like very controlled Like they have the The shamas I don't give a fuck Where you are bro My heart Does a weird heartbeat Cause you know Sometimes your heart Will flutter and go yeah, yeah, that, and you're like, I'm, I'm yeah, you're like, take me to the hospital, bro. If that happened to me while I was on some shit, bro, I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna have the worst. <laughs> the but have you worst. ever seen Inception? Inception, I think I have. Anyways, they have these places where like you lay down and they administer and they, like it's all controlled, like it's all good, like something like that. I think I could do, but I don't know, like man. just like a, a Sunday night or a Saturday night, and I got like a bag of shrooms or something. I ain't doing that shit. Bro. Nah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I can do any hallucinogenic. <sighs> No man, no. Um, damn, that was like veering off. What's up, guys? Yo, thank you guys for tuning in, man. It's uh, what is it's February something, right? It's February sixteenth. Yeah, probably 16. like two weeks from now. We we approaching March. We about a month away from mm, our three. We'll probably drop this like second and third week of March. I'm thinking. It's already second week of March. Oh, second third week of March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we already have what three. So in the we tuck? we gotta start thinking about that three year episode. We about to be three years, and we haven't done shit. <laughs> nah, fuck out, fuck out of here. We'll be three K by the time we make three years. Three years, three K. Yeah, Who this? Our our growth has been 
the last just six months. <coughs> We've three x our growth in the last six months. Yeah, I've been thinking about it though, because I'm I'm like I'm trying to find a I'm trying to think of a way to translate it to the long form, and it's just hard because like our a big thing with our growth and it's things that we should be doing, and it's like shorts, marketing and promotion and shit like that. It really helps, you know, but. I'm like we gotta we gotta we gotta conjure some shit up, man. And I think it goes back to the content. But I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Maybe for our three year episode, we actually go and do something like we've been saying for three years. Yeah, like maybe we actually go to you. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, but like even then, it's like yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just saying we haven't really done anything outside of the podcast. I feel like if we spent three years, Yo, the last three we years, busy, bro. I know, but if we actually spent the last three years doing somewhat consistency for something outside the podcast, I feel like we would have been We've been doing place. some different things. It's all right. Yo, let us know what we should be doing. Let's start doing Practical Jokers. Bro, I fucking love that show. Have you ever, like, really sat down and watched it? But here's my thing with doing something else to, oh, like, get popping is I don't like doing that. <laughs> what? Like, all right, like, we do some, like, some sidewalk shit, like, some conversations, shit like that, right? Like, to get popping. Like, Brody's done it here and there, you know? But, like, let's just say we do it our own way and it's fire. I don't like doing that shit. I like doing this. Why don't we give back to the community, bro? Fuck the community, bro. Damn. I know. All right, man. You ready? All right, I got something for you. I got something for you. Yo, no pocket watch park, you know, no pocket watch segment this week because this week has been fucking rough for me. R- 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 Remix. This week has sucked. That's crazy. Fat, fat cock this week. Boy. Okay. For real, for real. All right. I learned, I, I, I found, I, I learned, I heard something interesting. Yeah. So, um, and let me, let me know what you think. Tell me. So, like, uh, over the course of, like, my career or whatever, I've had a bunch of different bosses or whatever, a bunch of different levels. Oh, no, are you venting? No, I'm not venting. I've had a bunch of different bosses. I've seen a bunch of different leaders, even outside of my company, stuff like that, right? Uh-huh. And even I have different friends. I think this is a, an interesting point for, like, awareness and, like, also understanding of other people. Uh-huh. So, and and it's kind of framed around leadership, but I think it applies in different ways. But um, Malcolm Malcolm Gladwell's plane crash theory. Have you ever heard about Malcolm Gladwell's plane crash theory? No, it's kind of old. It was like he came out with a book in like two thousand eight, and some of the studies in it were from another guy that was like right before him or whatever. But pretty much. So every culture, right, if you if you do, like, international business, international studies, whatever, economics or whatever, uh-huh. every um, every culture, so, and they kind of separate it by, uh, like, con- you know, destinations like Brazil, United States, Venezuela, you know, China, whatever. But really it's a culture thing. And that's when, the reason why I say culture is because it's, it's like an on average. Like, you could be Chinese, but if you fucking were born and raised in New York, like, that's not your culture. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I don't want to say it's ethnicity. It's more of a culture thing. Yeah. But uh, every every culture kind of has different things that they get measured by, right? So there's like... Uh, Penis size. Yes, for sure. So like Jamaica, huge cock. Actually, believe it or not, you know, South America actually holds the, 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 the top spots. I believe it. I believe it. I got mm-hmm. a bunch of South American friends. You've been seeing all your South American Bro, friends? Christian's brothers? <laughs> That's just Puerto Rico. That's not even South America, bro. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyways, um, I've, what you want to keep talking about wieners? <laughs> <laughs> Zach, hey, uh, actually, I was, I was trying to remember what the number one was, but I forgot. Shout out to Zach bringing the white man's average up. <laughs> <laughs> Zach's the only reason why it's five point five. <laughs> yeah, that's for guys like Zach, it'd be five. <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> no, wait. Let me finish. Okay, okay, okay. So every culture has like these different things that measure. Like they have general measures, right? Some of this is like genitals. General, general measures. General measures. Risk okay. adversity is one, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like uh, the amount of risk a culture is willing to take. Yes. Risk of avoidance 
like uncertainty, mm -hmm. whatever. It's like one of those words or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Pretty yeah. much, like for example, we we have like high risk adversity or uh, tolerance, high risk tolerance, tolerance in the United yeah. States. Countries like Germany have like hard times implementing credit cards because mm -hmm. they're so risk adverse. Mm -hmm. Like they're like they don't even understand paying for something not cash. Mm -hmm. To where like credit cards don't even really work, and they're trying to like implement that to help the economy. Another one is power distance. Power distance is the extent to which um, a subordinate feels they can question or, you know, like, um, uh, object to their superior. And it's also to the extent that a superior will, like, uh, adhere to or understand their subordinate, right? Okay. So, for example, uh, United States, very low power distance. Like, subordinates don't give a fuck to tell their boss, like, that's stupid. Like, yeah. we tell, we talk about our government all the fucking time. Yeah, like, it's like the fucking place fuck sucks. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, mom. You know, like, yeah. shit like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Versus, like, some countries, like, you know, like China or whatever, Brazil, Venezuela, some of those countries or whatever, it's like, you'll never see the high class with the low class. Nor, yeah. nor, nor does the low class or subordinates question their superiors ever. Yeah. Right? Like, it's like, whoa, did you just say that to your boss? Like, what the hell? Right? Yeah. So, around power distance, Malcolm Gladwell's um, plane crash theory is about power distance. Okay? So, pretty much, there's a guy that did a study and... Was his name Malcolm Gladwell? No, no, no. So, Malcolm Gladwell... Uh, he's kind of like a philosopher kind of guy. I don't even want to say what he is because I don't really know. But he wrote a book pretty much. It's kind of like business oriented, mm -hmm. leadership oriented, um, pretty much kind of like how understanding different cultures and how they react in like leadership positions, shit like that. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like an awareness thing. Like, hey, like maybe you don't under you don't know, but like, you know, like this is how different people do business, whatever yeah. the case is. And what he did, though, is he took somebody else's study that I don't know. But. It was a study where they took um, all plane crashes, right, um, that had, like, not technical malfunctions, like, not where they should have crashed. Mm -hmm. Like, all plane crashes where everything should have been fine. The pilot wasn't drunk. Like, like reasons why a plane would crash, they take those out. Those are, those are like, yes, that should have happened. These are the plane crashes that happened. The outliers. That, that the shouldn't have happened, right? And what they did was they took that list of plane crashes and they they uh, pretty much um, tiered the number of plane crashes by the culture of the pilot and co-pilot, right? So here's the highest number of plane crashes and all the way down, and here's the culture of the co-pilots and, and uh, uh, pilots. And then next to it, they did here's the culture's ranking in power, uh, power distance. And there was... Like a freaking out, like crazy correlation uh -huh. between these plane crashes that shouldn't have happened, and the cult with the cultures of the pilots and co-pilots, and then the cultures power distance ranking. That's really interesting. That sounds so cool. I want to look into that. And to like drive the point in, they they showed like you know the black box, right? So like when a plane goes down, you listen to the black box to see yep. like what's going on. You can hear everything. So like of one of the top. Uh, plane crash cultures or whatever they took the black box just to kind of like this was probably the most obvious example so let me just say that and again let me just say this is this is on average right but no this was the most obvious uh example that they were no incapacitated doesn't belong on this list of course you're gonna crash because the the pilot was incapacitated well so there's like actual mental incapacitation no, no, no. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. On this. Okay, I'll let you talk. So in the respect of power distance, where mm -hmm. superior listens to their subordinate, subordinate feels they can question their superior. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, the black box was, um, it, it, so they, that's how they set it up. Here's the correlation. Listen to this black box. And uh, uh, I think I know where this is going. So pretty much the, the co-pilot was like, Telling the pilot, like, hey, there's ice on the wings. We need to do this. I've seen that. I've seen that video. The pilot didn't say nothing. Then the pilot... The co-pilot said again, like, hey, our gauges are, like, doing this. We need to do this. The pilot said nothing. Pretty much, like, t like it was, like, three or four times he was war telling him, like, yo, this and this and this. Pilot is not fine. At the very end, he was, like, the plane's going down. And the pilot was, like, I know. That's actually a really famous accident. Is it really? Yeah, I've, I've watched that one. So, you know that the cultures of the pilot 
I don't know the culture correlated the perfectly with the but, power. But I believe it, the more the more people that were more subordinate, like the more people that were more willing to like just accept whatever their boss says for that, they're they're less likely to be able to stand up against something like that. To compound that, so that's that's one example. The other example, and you would know this, when um and I didn't know that, when planes land, like it's strategically you're you have very little fuel. Yeah. Like you're supposed to, like you have enough fuel to get you to your destination. And you a, have and you have a reserve. Like a small room for air, right? Yeah. And so that's that example with the black box is the pilot with high power distance not listening to his subordinate, right? But on the same on the other end, um, if the pilot has a high power distance, they feel like they can't question their superior. Um, air traffic control can be dickheads, especially at JFK. That was the yeah. example they provided. And there was a lot of plane crashes that happened because the pilot, like, you're supposed to tell air traffic control, if you're about to run out of gas, yeah. like, no, motherfucker, I need to land right now. Yeah. Because I'm out of gas. There was, like, a handful of plane crashes that happened because the pilot kept accepting the air traffic controls, like, no, nope, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. Mm-hmm. You can't land yet. You can't. And they were circling, and then they ended up crashing because they ran out of gas. Yeah. And. It's fuel. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was just interesting in itself. Yeah. But then the cool thing about Malcolm Gladwell's plane crash theory is he correlates that to leadership. Mm. Where it's like, understand that like different leaders from different cultures have like, they have different battles. Different abilities, yeah. Like different battles that they don't even know they're battling. So like also like think about it like, like, and again, this is on average. I would love to see that list of the countries. Bro, it was, it was like, uh... There wasn't a the correlation stopped after like the top eight, mm. which is like crazy. So like the top eight on power distance was like the top eight on plane crashes that shouldn't have happened. And what countries were those? I didn't know which ones, but uh, Brazil was high. Uh, there was uh, Colombia was one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were like those were like the ones that stuck out to me. And was United States up there? United States has low power distance. Really? So the United States co-pilot is screaming at the fucking pilot. Yeah, yeah. And, and not only that, but the pilot, like, is worried about what the co-pilot is saying. And not only that, an American, I don't want to say American, United States pilot at JFK, if the air traffic control is telling them you can't land. It's like, fuck you, mate. We're I'm going fucking to fucking landing, bro. Yeah, yeah. So that's, like, United States was very low on power distance, also very low on those types of plane crashes. Mm. And uh, that's why I was like interesting. And then when you frame it around like a leadership business type of perspective, where was China? They're high. They're high up there. Yeah, I don't know about the plane crashes. I'm gonna be honest with you. I know that China has had a lot, a lot of accidents over the last few years, but it's also they have a high population too. So and they can't drive cars either. So wait, hold on. This. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. And I was like, wow, bro, like. Yeah, like I've had different cultures be, I've seen different cultures be leaders. I've been friends with different cultures and stuff like that. And even like, it was something interesting to know, like even in Japan, like it's disrespectful to look at your teacher. Yeah, no, where like guess. in this, in, in the United States, if you don't look at your teacher, your teacher feels like you're not engaged, you know, and they feel like there's something wrong with them. So I just thought it was kind of interesting, man. And like, like depending on what job you go into or whatever, it is kind of good to know or be aware of like the culture your boss or your leader comes from and it kind of helps you kind of helps your expectations on what what you what you might get uh. you know what i mean like some like kind of certain some of check 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 the culture of your boss check the culture of your leader and stuff like that and then check where they rank on power distance and see if that correlates see if that makes sense in meetings see if that makes sense on decisions they make see if that makes sense on some things and it's like Sometimes, uh, again, on average, maybe that doesn't apply to them. But sometimes it's like, yo, they might be so ingrained with that culture and really be a stereotype of that power distance to where, like, apply that to not a plane. Apply that to a business or something. Yo, the plane's going down. Like, you could tell a motherfucker 20 times that this is wrong, this is this, this is that, until you're like, yo, the plane's going down. It's like, I know. And it's like, it's too late. It's like, I didn't want to listen to you. And and vice versa. Like, if you feel like you come from a culture like that, and, and it's kind of nice to have that awareness or whatever the case is, you know? And we have, like, a mix in the States because we also respect uh, status. We also respect 
you know, like positions, sometimes. titles, and stuff sometimes. Like that. That's one thing I like about. I want to say as a whole, but like overall, I feel like I feel like yes, there is a certain level of respect that comes with status and title, but I also feel like we're not afraid to call somebody out on their bullshit. Yeah, like like if you could have a certain status or whatever, and if you kind of don't act in that part, a lot of people will call you out, and they're not going to respect you to that level. Yeah, I feel like it's easier for us to just be like, yeah, yeah, great, he's a fucking captain, but he's a fucking retard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And what's interesting too is like I learned this in my negotiation class mm. And like the frame was around like Maybe kind of be aware of who you're going into negotiations with And kind of Because I learned that in an in international business But that was kind of just Imagine you're going to different countries And you're doing business mm. Understand these things This lady said the same thing Brought up the same concepts But framed it around like Kind of be aware of the culture you're going into negotiations Yeah, because you might have to be a little bit more submissive Or you might have to stand up a little bit more And they like that Or, like, th- if you want to push back Be aware of how you push back because Depending on mm-hmm. their culture And how they rank on some of these things You know what I mean? Like power distance, risk adverse Like a lot of these different things And it's like, it is kind of interesting I don't know And I just thought I have I just, I was looking at that And I was like, boy I had some examples pop into my head And I was like, man Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like it's kind of it's kind of weird when you see some of those studies and you like instantly think about like examples that you know in your life and you're like, man, that shit clicked. That mm-hmm. shit just clicked for me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. A little jump I've, for you. I thought, I thought that was really cool. I never even heard of that. That's yeah, awesome. I, I tied in business and plane crashes. I know so. it's great. It's like <laughs> fuck, bro. That's like <laughs> fucking epitome. I'm gonna be fucking driving home watching some videos. You like that shit. shit, man? You like that? You like that? Yeah, that was fire. I All like right. that. Here we go. I got another one for you. Ready? I'm ready. Um. Oh man, it went away. Fired up, daddy. So I was on, and actually, oh, these next two topics. Shout out to LinkedIn. Um. Shout out to LinkedIn. Yeah. Did they sponsor us? Yeah, no. Nah. So this, so we're going to say shout out to. Shout out to. My, throw that sponsor. My father-in-law is here. Bump. All right. Bump. Bump. So. Um, bum, dun, dun, bum, I follow, bum. like on LinkedIn, I follow like this big, this big recruiter lady. And really it's not for that, but it's mainly for, um. It's mainly for, like, the content she posts because it's really insightful or whatever. And she's, like, accounting and stuff, finance and accounting. But she was, like, this is this was her post. And listen to this. And, like, as an accountant or somebody that graduated in accounting and um, we've had conversations about, like, how, you know, 20 years from now, maybe, like, the, the trade work schooling is going to be as yeah. in demand as, like, the and, and then, like, accounting and IT or whatever might not be so much in demand. But here's this. This is very interesting. I've been, this is this lady. I've been speaking with clients for several of years about the national decline of graduating accountants. Here's an inter- interesting article that, that shares all of the data about this trend. I have been working for several years with the School of Accounting at UCF to present uh, to business students the benefits of a career in accounting as opposed to the general business degree. We all, we all in the professional need, uh, we all, we all in the profession need to do our part to change this trend. So I did not know that there was a downward trend in uh, people graduating in accounting. Uh, I always thought like, that's obvious, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, you go get your accounting degree, not a general business degree. Somebody that from somebody that graduated in accounting, that shit is fucking hard, bro. Like, like, uh, and I remember like multiple times, well, if I'm thinking in my undergrad, if I fail this class, I'll, that's fine. I'll take, I'll take, I'll, I'll go to finance. You know, because there was like the the requirements for finance was way, the finance degree was way lower. Mm. And like, so every time I was like, almost, and I did fail a class and I had one semester to correct myself. And I, like, if I didn't, if I didn't do it, then I was going to switch my, my major. degree, my major to finance. And then I finally got my degree in account, bro. Like that was like a revelation, which is so ironic because I barely use that shit. Well, I do, but <laughs> but never would I have thought like like oh yeah, like something like usually the hardest degrees should provide like the most benefit. Mm-hmm. But when I read that article, I was and after uh, you know I graduated with my bachelor's four years ago, five years ago now. 
So after being like in the workforce and seeing the market, I understand this trend, right? So this is a lady um, that's a big recruiter or whatever, and she's talking about like let's let's do our part to kind of get people to to choose accounting as a as a major and graduate as an accountant or whatever. And and I wanted to comment, but I was like, you know what? Let me save this for the podcast. These are my comments. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like if you so just 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 for respect, like. Accounting was a lot harder than a finance degree, uh-huh. but when I, like in my experience in the market, five years in the five years uh, after I graduated, the higher paying jobs are finance jobs. Mm. Not only that, um, like, is that overall, or is it you just see like a no, like a skew? Like uh, I would say, finance jobs are paying somewhere around. 15 to 30k more than accounting jobs so for every senior accountant job you see you'll see a senior financial analyst job that's probably 15 to 30k pays more but aren't you a finance analysis i'm a business analyst Mm. and that's one thing that's why i got my degree in accounting because it's like it's good if you know accounting and then you you can do finance Mm -hmm. because you know uh, uh, when you do finance, you know where your balance sheet, income state, you know the fucking Meeting making. Yeah. You know the how that materials. was built. You look at it and you you just kind of see things like you understand how, what came from what to make uh-huh. that, which it helps you so much when you get into the finance yeah. world. Um, but also those jobs don't require an accounting degree because uh-huh. like a finance degree works, you know, this kind of degree works, whatever the case is. Um, or like business with an MBA, go be a financial analyst or whatever, and they pay they pay so much better. And realistically, outside of a contr- like in the accounting world, uh, staff accountant, uh, uh, associate at like a CPA firm or something, yeah, um, uh, senior accountant, accounting manager, senior financial analysts get paid more or the same as an accounting manager. And it takes a long time to become an accounting manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm talking about equivalent, same size companies, you know, like that. Like yeah. obviously big company accounting manager makes more than a small company financial analyst. Do you think that's just your market here or is that market nationwide? Bro, that's nationwide. Remote, uh, different states, all whatever the case is. And and mainly I think it's because it takes a little like to do finance is more of an art. So a degree in finance is a bachelor's in art. Yeah. Degree in accounting is a bachelor's in science. And I think that there's a little bit to that where like accounting is a little more black and white and you can't be a little more boring where finance, you got to kind of project and you got to forecast and you got to try to do some things that are a little different. You know, you got to have a different understanding and I get that, but I do think that that goes to the trend of people not choosing accounting as a degree. Mm. Think about it, man. Like I'm not, my, my job isn't in accounting. Why money? Mm -hmm. Like I left accounting because of money. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I if I got fired today, I'm probably not going to go get an accounting job. I'm going to go get an analyst job. Yeah, because it's just like, why? Why would I wait ten years to be an accounting manager to make the same money I can make right now? Yeah, the only time it starts to make sense is controller CFO. But even CFOs, it's like finance background is just as good, like general business shit like that, to the point where, and then, what else is on a decline is CPAs. Because it's so fucking hard. Now, those that have a CPA, you're a badass. You're you're super fucking, like, you're a badass, right? Yeah. But also, like, <coughs> it's not really necessary for a lot of the jobs that you, that you can go get. Unless you're working at a public firm or whatever. Or you're, you're doing taxes and shit like that or whatever the case is. And that's where you make big bucks. Yeah. But it's like, okay, I got my accounting degree. But there's this huge gap mm-hmm. before I can really make the money that I thought I was going to be able to make. Yeah. Like, like okay, you can get your accounting degree and you can make good money and you'll be fine. Like, decent money, whatever. But, like, if you want to go six figures and all this shit, like, you got to wait 10 fucking years or so before you can get there. Yeah. Or, especially if you go to a CPA firm, it's like a hospital. Unless you get your master's in accounting, you're not making more than 85 to 90. And then you will never make more than that or be a partner unless you get your CPA because this is a CPA firm or whatever. And that makes sense. But that's how you fix graduating accountants. It's like pay the motherfuckers more 
And I've never seen such a low demand for accountants in my life, bro. Like, I thought when I got my... It could, be, it could be a pro for you in five years. Which, when I read that, I was like, Thank, yes. Like, I hope less and less people get that shit. Because, <laughs> because that, that turns it... that Maybe... Exactly. Maybe the market starts to shift mm-hmm. because there's so many finance people, analyst people. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it might have been the opposite. It might have been everybody's like, why am I going to get on my finance degree when I can just do a little bit more and become an accountant? Yeah. And then, because I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Because not enough people will know bank I'm going to be honest with flow, you. Shit like that. I feel like somebody saying, oh, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm an accountant is way more common than somebody saying, oh, I got my degree in finance. That is what? I feel like it's easier to find somebody that says, I got my degree in accounting versus somebody saying, I got a degree in finance. I don't know anybody who has their degree in, account- in finance, but I know multiple people with their degree in accounting. Yeah. Do you know anybody with a degree well, in finance? And let me just say, maybe my experience is because of UCF. UCF is a is a good business school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and par- partially, maybe they make that program harder so they could have better accountants come mm-hmm. out. But... It, it's a little counterproductive if well i'm just saying i think i think for. maybe like back in the day people's mindset was become an accountant a finance is kind of like the backup backup for it, you know what i mean yeah yeah so people probably just pushed through and became accountants and because of the low but demand you say that because you know me name another accounting degree person you know what i mean i know three i know four people with accounting degrees really yeah and not finance not finance. I don't know. Not one person with a finance degree. So, like, relatively in my MBA, let's just say this: in my MBA program, uh, there's only like 24 of us. I'm the only one with an accounting degree, and there's five finance majors, and there's 15 business majors. Maybe because finance people go for MBAs. I know people. I know two true two people with MBAs. People with accounting don't go for MBAs. They go for that CPAs. Might, that might be why they go for masters in accounting. That's a big reason. Why. That might be why. So maybe they don't say, "Hey, I got my fucking." I got a fucking bachelor's in fucking finance and I got my master's in fucking business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe that's a possibility. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the only reason why. But I've never heard somebody say, like, oh, what did you study? Oh, I studied finance. I got my degree in finance. I've never heard of that. And <coughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, so in my experience, it's been the opposite, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of the people... And, that, and strictly because of the school you're at, though. So, like, a lot of people, um, not even, workforce, mm. right? Well, I never really had, like, a yeah, corporate yeah. job so either. Like so, like, a lot of the, like, um, people that are in positions, even at my company, but, like, other companies that I've seen, what's weird is, like, you see, you're see you seeing more CFOs now, not at the big companies, because they require CPAs. You can't get your CPA unless you have an accounting degree. That's dead. But like in the middle to lower level businesses, you see more finance and MBA people uh, being those chiefs in finance. That's and, interesting. And even to the point where like they call the department finance. They don't call it the accounting department yeah. or whatever. If somebody said that they had the degree in finance, I'd be like, oh, so you do like loans? <laughs> yeah, right? That's but, what I would be like, oh, financing. <laughs> I don't know so why. That's one thing thinking. that gives them the edge. But the reason why I never switched was because like finance is way more applicable. Finance is like uh, ratios. Like what's your what's your uh, asset your return on assets? What's your mm-hmm. what's your uh, you know what's your contribution margin to 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 revenue? What's your like what are all these ratios? Because because they're technically setting the base for like people doing stocks and like evaluating mm-hmm. companies. Mm-hmm. Like all those numbers you see on the stock market are a bunch of finance nerds computing and doing all these things, right? Mm-hmm. So it is super a- applicable. In my mind, I'm like I'd rather learn journal entries, cash flow, bank rec- reconciliation, stuff like that. I can learn ratios. You know what I mean? Versus learning ratios and then trying to learn journal entries, income statements, balance sheets and shit like that. So that was my argument. But it's it still is finance is way more relevant. Or no, yeah. But okay. I just I was like, man, I, that was my thing. The accounting market is not what it was. And I think that it'll is, be it'll be great if it transitions on you. Oh, that's why I'm like waiting. Like, I don't want to pivot in any way until I've kind of see how this goes but yeah anyways that was interesting the accounting market is not what it was and i think that's exactly why you're seeing a decline in accounting graduates oh 34 so that means ladies when you go to the bar you're gonna have less and less guys that are being like what do you do for a living oh i'm an accountant and you're gonna be like oh how boring yeah (laughs) i'm just joking 
I, I think what Cruz does is cool and interesting. I like listening to well, yourself, bro. So, and that's where I'm like, okay, cool. I'll get the boring degree, but I'm going to try to do different jobs. You know what I'm saying? One quote that I saw here, shout out to LinkedIn. Last thing, we'll end with this one. Unemployed Gen Zers are having to turn down work because they can't afford the commute in uniform. Damn. Report shows. Damn, y'all, y'all need to tighten up. What the fuck is that, bro? So that's not like they're that's not like they're doing too much DoorDash. Can't I can't afford to commute to work? I'm gonna turn down a job. It's called the grind and bike to work for a little bit until you get like yo, paychecks. you can't take a bus or some shit like that. Like for real. you can't, man. Anyways. That shit pissed me off. Thank y'all for tuning in for another week. That was a session of Cruz's comments. Cruz's we got comments. we got fun facts with Zach and we got Cruz's comments. Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> Don't be pocket watching unless you're watching Pocket Watch Podcast. We love y'all. Make sure y'all like, follow, share, subscribe. Subscribe. That's crazy. That's crazy. (laughs) Pocket Watch. Out.